of us who are praying together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this retreat. Thank you for your special touch on every life. Thank you for the great provisions you have made for everyone. We're asking, Lord, that everyone will be filled to overflowing in Jesus' name. Fill our cup. Fill our hearts. Fill our lives. And fill us to overflowing in Jesus' name. Everything you provided for us, make us to see, make us to receive, and make us to possess in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that this session that will reveal the kingdom, the kingdom treasures to us, every one of us will possess the provided treasures in Jesus' name. Help those who are weak. Strengthen those who are down. Lift up everyone. We we'll pray that those who are sick, your hand will touch them and heal everyone in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, nobody will go away from here disappointed. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Matthew chapter 13. And I'm reading from verses 44 through to 46. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hideth. And for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he has, and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one, one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it in these two parables that are linked together we find the lord jesus christ the king of the kingdom telling us about the treasures in the kingdom and the way the lord jesus christ has presented this kingdom of god having treasure he said to start with, there's so much treasure in the kingdom, but it's hidden in a field the average man cannot see, the average person cannot understand. They see the outside of the kingdom and they do not know what is hidden in that kingdom. But it says, A man found the hidden treasure. That can be you tonight. I said that can be you tonight. And then he said, For the joy thereof, he goes and he selleth all that he has and he buys that field. He's telling us that everything this man had possessed, every man, everything this man had worked for, Every man, everything this man had been seeking for and he appeared to have got did not amount to anything when compared with the treasure. And he knew that. And because of that, he sold everything that he had so that he could buy the field and then possess the treasure. In verse 45, Jesus gave a similar parable and he's still talking about the kingdom of heaven and he said this one now is like a merchant man and he's been seeking goodly pills this one has been all his life searching searching and seeking and eventually he found one pill of great price he actually was seeking for many because you look at verse 45, was looking for pearls in the, in the plural. 
but now he found one and this one was of great price very precious very great and it will answer all the questions of his search and so because of that again this one sold all that he had everything he had ever labored for he sold everything so that he could purchase that pearl of great price what verse 44 calls treasure verse 45 calls pearls goodly pearls verse 46 mentions one pearl of great price as we look at that passage tonight i was talking on kingdom treasures number one we're going to look at the perception of the pearl of the kingdom treasure what's the pearl what's he referring to we know he's talking about the kingdom of heaven it's talking about the kingdom of God. It's talking about the riches of the kingdom. It's talking about what God has provided for you and for me, for everyone in the kingdom. Number one then of our message, part one. The personal perception of the pearl of kingdom treasure. But then it told us what the man did and what the merchant did. He sold all, all that he had, so that he could purchase that pill. Point number two, the precious price for purchasing the kingdom treasure. The precious price for purchasing the kingdom treasure. And then point number three, the wisdom of the man the prudence of the man and the wisdom and the prudence of the merchant that he knows that if i'm going to possess the greatest thing i ever discovered in my life i have to give something for that point number three the prudent purchase and possession of kingdom treasure the prudent purchase and possession of kingdom treasure let's come to number one the personal perception of the pearl of kingdom treasure you see each of these people the man and the merchant had to think had to look had to examine and personally see the kingdom treasure personally understand the value and the greatness of this kingdom treasure and what's that when we think about the kingdom and jesus talks about such a kingdom and he says there is treasure in the kingdom there are pearls of great price in the kingdom what are they first corinthians chapter 2 first corinthians chapter 2 treasure hidden Pearl hidden, great things hidden in the kingdom for you to possess, for me to possess. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God as prepared for them that love him you can see in this passage it says it's never entered into the heart of man man does not know this man cannot see this ordinarily the ordinary man the religious man the moral man the philosophical man the scientific man the educated man they go through life they cannot even see the kingdom the value of the kingdom the treasure of the kingdom the prize something of great price in the kingdom but it says i has not seen it's hidden neither has man heard it's hidden neither have entered into the heart of man it's hidden the things the treasures the great things 
that God has prepared for those who love him and enter into the kingdom. Look at verse 10. But God has revealed them to us. Like the man in the parable, as was searching for pearls, searching for treasure, he found it. You'll find it tonight. And he purchased it. You'll get it tonight in Jesus' name. And then it says, it's revealed to us by his spirit. It's the spirit of God that reveals this. But the spirit searches all things while you are searching to discover what has provided, what he wants to give you in the kingdom. It says, the spirit himself searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. God. Luke chapter 12. Reading from verse 32. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Again, here the Lord Jesus is saying. There's something so precious, so great, and so high, broad, and deep, and wide. That only the Father in heaven, only God himself, the Almighty, can give us this. And it says, it's in the kingdom. Look at verse 33. Sell that ye have. You understand? It's saying, even though this is so great, and this is so mighty, and this is so precious, you need to get something out of the way so that you can have this great treasure. Sell that you have. Give arms. Provide yourselves bags. Which wax not hold. A treasure in the heavens. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. When no thief approaches, neither moss corrupts. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Lord is intimating us again that there is treasure, treasure in the kingdom, the treasure of the kingdom. What are these treasures? Number one, eternal life eternal life many people go to religious assemblies they go to churches many people bury themselves in denominations and they never know that in the field of the world and field of religion there is the treasure of eternal life there's salvation salvation because you have heard it so often you might not understand what kind of treasure that is there's forgiveness of sin when there's no condemnation and when there is no pressure on the heart when there's no fear of eternal judgment because of the freedom from condemnation and then there's a key of authority that he gives to those who come to the kingdom behold i give unto you the keys of the kingdom that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. It's a treasure. It's a appeal of great prize. The keys of authority. There is peace and joy. The world does not know joy. The people of the world, they do not know joy. But you come into the kingdom and you discover there is joy and there is peace that passes understanding. How are we going to talk about the sonship to God? You know, in this world, it's not what you know. It's who you know. Who is your dad? Who is your father? How rich? How wealthy? How generous? How loving? We have an heavenly father. And to discover sonship in the kingdom, that now you can be referred to as a child of God. That's a treasure. And then we have the riches of Christ. Riches of Christ. You think of how rich Christ is. And for your sake he became poor. So that 
you can be rich and he has provided this for you part of the treasure that we have personal perception about is the riches of christ and then healing for all sicknesses that's what the people of the world cannot discover if they're looking for healing they don't think they're coming to the kingdom if they're looking for healing they don't think that the kingdom has healing they think that they know where healing is and they go to all those places they think they, they can find healing in a scientific way but you know that is limited by the one that will give you healing for incurable disease incurable diseases are taken away from your life tonight in jesus name and then long life long life the span of life that um, the country has uh, published publicized is about 55 years of age they say that's the average lifespan of people in this country some go beyond that some even live before that time but for you 55 years you have just started living 65 you have just started living 75 you have just started living you will finish all the assignment god has given you here on earth before you go to eternal life over there in jesus name but you know what we are talking about this is the personal perception of the pill of kingdom treasure there is deliverance every evil power will live your life alone you will live your life in freedom you live your life in total dominion in jesus name I about purity and power I about purity and holiness I about power and divine ability the very ability of christ it passes on to you he that believeth on me the works i do he shall do and greater works than these shall he do because i go to the father it's a treasure in the kingdom and he gives us the divine nature he has given us great precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature it's a treasure in the kingdom and then uh, there is the likeness unto god as he is in this world even so are we as well there is a uh, glory and joy unspeakable glory and joy unspeakable this joy will be yours and this glory will be yours and it's going to be a tearless eternity when all the sinners religious sinners when all the sinners moral sinners when all the sinners philosophical sinners when all the sinners denominational sinners when all the sinners church sinners when all the sinners the sinners of the world when they are suffering and crying in hellfire yours will be a tearless eternity no more tears no more sorrow no more heartache no more pressure and there is no more concern or any suffering you'll be in heaven you'll have eternal happiness that's a treasure you come into the kingdom and you're wondering what am i going to have there is heaven and there is eternal happiness when we get there somebody there is getting there i said somebody there is getting there where is he there somebody in the front you are going to get there you'll get there in jesus name when we get there there's going to be equality with angels in heaven equality with angels in heaven you think about that and you think about angels now how great they are how far away they are how powerful they are how mighty they are how close to the kingdom how close to the throne of god they are and yet when you get over there you'll be just like them you'll have eternal inheritance i said you'll have eternal inheritance there's going to be immortality and an endless paradise endless paradise we're coming to ephesians chapter one the treasures of the kingdom that the lord has prepared for us 
I pray you will not miss out. Yours will be this pill of kingdom treasure in Jesus name. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being, on, of being enlightened that she may know what is the hope of his calling and watch the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Look at chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 verse 7 and has raised us up together and made us see together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus that's what we are going to possess chapter 3 verse 8 in chapter 3 verse 8 unto me whom I'm less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God not known not seen not discovered by many people who created all things by Jesus Christ look at verse 18 may be able to comprehend I pray you'll have understanding have enlightenment have comprehension may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which possess knowledge that ye might be filled tell me that ye might be filled tell me with all the fullness of God can you imagine to be filled with God? To be filled with the fullness of God? To be filled with all the fullness of God? You'll be on top of the world. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where? In us unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages world without end yeah. and somebody shout yeah. look at Colossians chapter 2 Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 it says in verse 3 in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge you see that's part of what the lord has prepared for us it's hidden in him look at verse 9 for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily and ye are complete in him make it personal and uh, I am complete in him. Say that out aloud. Anything lacking in your life will be supplied. Spiritually, you'll be complete. Physically, you'll be complete. Professionally, you'll be complete. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. We're coming to first peter chapter one in first peter chapter one reading from verse three the treasures we have in christ the treasures that are hidden in the kingdom as we become citizens of the kingdom first peter chapter one verse three blessed be the god and father 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, this is yours. To an inheritance, I said this is yours. And you begin to enjoy it even here on earth in Jesus' name. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, this one will never pass away. Reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for me. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time second peter chapter one second peter chapter one the personal perception of the peel of kingdom treasure second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power as given unto us as given unto us do you have as given unto us will you have as given unto us will you possess according as his divine power as given unto us tell me tell me out aloud you will never lack anymore all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue whereby are given unto us you are a possessor whereby I giving unto us I am a possessor whereby I giving unto you exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be ye might be partakers of what kind of nature Satan's nature is taken out of you weak human nature is taken out of you compromising nature of the fearful man is taken out of you and society nature is taken out of you and the nature of your natural family that is weak and having problems and some of them die prematurely all that nature is taken away from you you're now a new creature a different person a different personality because now we're partakers of the divine nature having escaped i have escaped having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lost all blessings here on earth and blessings up in eternity will be yours in jesus name number two now let's come back to matthew chapter 13 the precious price for purchasing kingdom treasures the precious price for purchasing kingdom treasure we're looking at matthew chapter 13 verse 44 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field which when a man has found he hideth and for the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field for us to understand that verse he gave all that he had so that he can buy the field think about this parable of the kingdom and think about the lord jesus christ himself let's apply this to christ and then we'll apply it to the christian look at this now that the lord jesus christ as we look at this parable the king of the kingdom he has treasure hidden in the field of the world that is you one soul that's me another soul that's your whole family those who can be those who will be saved and then that's the whole nation 
and that's the whole world behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world and then he gave up himself entirely without any reservation so that the souls of the saints the sinners but they are going to become saints could be purchased out of the field of the world what does the bible say the bible says that christ bought us christ purchased us philippians philippians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 5 philippians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 5 see what christ has done and see what you are called to do let this might be you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and he was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross that's what he gave he gave up his whole life look at the result wherefore god has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord and to the glory of god the father Ephesians, uh, um, hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 we're looking at verse 2 looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith oh for the joy that was set before him the joy of saving millions of people that's the treasure those millions of people from that time he was on the cross and he told that see for the cross today you'll be with me in paradise and then all the other people that get saved after he rose from the dead on the day of pentecost after the day of pentecost until the present time that's the treasure that he gave himself for and he was looking for he was looking at that looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god he gave himself his totality and touchy to purchase us to buy us look at acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts chapter 20 reading from verse 28 Take ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Listen to this. To feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. That's what he paid. It's like he sold all. He gave all so that he could purchase us the church unto himself first corinthians chapter 6 in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 for ye are bought with a price he paid a precious price he sold all so to say he gave all so to say so that he can have us the treasure of his kingdom what will the kingdom look like without any citizen what will the kingdom look like without any person in that kingdom and the kingdom had nobody until we got saved but as we're getting saved getting saved getting saved is filling that kingdom with the precious souls that he has bought with his own blood 
for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are God. Now, we come to the Christian. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 13. You've seen the treasure in the kingdom. You've seen the pearl of great price. And now for us to possess the treasures, eternal life, salvation, freedom, forgiveness, the keys of the kingdom, peace and joy, sonship to God, riches of Christ, healing and long life, deliverance and dominion, purity and holiness, power and divine ability, divine nature and divine likeness, glory and joy unspeakable, a cheerless eternity, heaven, eternal happiness, equality with angels in heaven, eternal inheritance, immortality and an endless paradise for us to possess that. And to have all this treasure, we give up something. Come back to Matthew chapter 13. And here in verse 44 again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in a field, which when a man has found, you will find it. He hideth, and for the joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath and buys that field. Let me show you, you some examples. We're looking at Ruth. Ruth chapter 1. She discovered in an Old Testament way, Old Testament picture, there's treasure in the kingdom that Naomi represented. Opa did not see that, but she saw that and she was going to give up all so she could possess in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 and Ruth said entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither thou goest I will go and whither thou lodgest I will lodge thy people shall be my people and I God, my God, where thou diest, there will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also. If aught but death part thee and me. You understand the case of Ruth? The possibility of having an husband, ordinary husband, morbidish husband, that she gave up. The possibility of having children that she said I sell all I am after the kingdom I am after the treasure the pearl of great price your God will be my God I want peace of mind I want heaven I want glory I want joy unspeakable I want the God of Israel to be my God she gave up all so she could have the treasure she had more than she expected. You are going to have more than you expect. Verse 18, when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her, and they went together. They went together. Matthew chapter 19, reading from verse 27. Matthew chapter 19, Reading from verse 27, giving up all that you see, so you can have all that you do not see. Giving up all that you have, so you can have much you don't have. Giving up the natural, so you can have the supernatural. Giving up the things of this world, so you can have the things of the world to come i pray god will open your eyes you will see the treasure you will see the pearl and whatever you have to give up to purchase and to possess this treasure the lord will give you the heart to do it in jesus name look at matthew chapter 19 verse 27 then answered peter and said 
unto him. Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? You see, Peter and the rest of the apostles did not understand. They didn't know about the day of Pentecost coming. And they didn't know what they will have. They didn't know about the privilege they will have. A ministry to thousands and thousands coming into the kingdom. Peter did not know at this time that even a shadow will be healing the sick. Peter did not know that he might get to the principal and angel will come from heaven and wake him up and march him out. Peter did not know that he will even raise the dead at this time but he knew that there's something in the kingdom there are many things you don't know now but God is going to give you there are many things you might not see now but they're waiting for you in the kingdom even the little that you see you're willing to give up everything so that you will possess and Peter said what shall we have there for verse 28 Jesus said unto them verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory ye also shall sit upon the thrones the twelve thrones and judging the twelve tribes of israel i thought you'll say amen, amen. what did they sell in the language of the parable what did he give up in the language of the parable? Verse 29, And everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive, tell me, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life you will inherit it will be yours in jesus name Amen. hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 24 we're looking at moses here when god appeared to moses at the bunny bush he only saw just a little calm I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. You will deliver the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. But could he know, could he tell all that will happen? Could he tell everything that God will do through him? No, he could not tell. Could he tell that through him water will come out of the rock? Could he tell that through him manna will come from heaven? Could he tell that it was silence all the magicians of Egypt? Could he tell that Pharaoh will even be appealing to him to pray for him? Could he tell that he will divide the Red Sea? No, he could not tell. That's the hidden peel of the kingdom. But all the same, Moses gave up everything. Could he tell that he will go to the Mount of God and get the law of God? For Israel and for the whole world, could he tell that his name will be in the book of God? That is in the Bible from, uh, from Exodus to Malachi and from Matthew unto Revelation. Could he tell that he will come and visit Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration? They were hidden. They were hidden. Many great things are still coming up in your life. You cannot tell yet. You cannot tell yet what will happen. But as you give up everything and you say, I'm going to have the treasures of the kingdom, your life will be a happy life, a prosperous life, and a wonderful life in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 24 by faith, Moses. When he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, 
esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward by faith he forsook Egypt for not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as tell me he endured as seeing him who is invisible he saw something you will see more than something the precious price of for purchasing the kingdom treasure whatever it is the lord is pointing to in your life why don't you lay that on my altar why don't you give that up Hey, hey, they are not sinful things necessarily they are not bad things necessarily you are giving up something good to get something better something higher and something that is the best let's come to Matthew chapter 13 Matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 45 and verse 46 you must give up something so you can have this pearl of great price verse 45 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls and they were told in verse 46 while he was seeking and searching but when he had found one pearl of great price he went sold all that he had and he bought it sold everything that he had and bought it point number three now the prudent purchase and possession of kingdom treasure the prudent purchase and possession of kingdom treasure we're coming to proverbs chapter 23 proverbs chapter 23 verse 23 buy the truth and sell it not buy the truth and sell it not when you discover the truth that's the truth of the kingdom you might not see what is inside that truth but you know the word of God says Christ is full of grace and truth. The salvation in the truth by the field, by the truth. The word of God says sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The sanctification in the truth. The word of God says ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. There's freedom in that truth. And the word of God says the comforter the spirit of truth will come and will abide with you forever there's power baptism in the holy ghost in that truth is the kingdom salvation in the kingdom coming through that truth sanctification holiness in the kingdom coming through that truth power from on high in that truth it is coming in that truth and the possession of the gifts of the spirit it is coming through that truth and all scripture the truth the scripture of truth is given unto us so we can possess all things it is in that truth and sometimes when we just say the truth and the truth and the truth you might not see everything in that truth but bring yourself your soul your mind your heart your consecration your knowledge your possession and whatever will stand in the way of the saving truth of the sanctifying truth of the empowering truth whatever will stand in the way of the kingdom truth you give that up and then you buy the truth and you'll never give up the truth in jesus name buy the truth and sell it not also wisdom and instruction and understanding Isaiah chapter 55 Isaiah chapter 55 I'm reading from verse 1 Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1 oh 
everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. He that has no money, come ye buy. He's telling us it's not money. We are going to expense to buy this one. Money cannot buy salvation. Money cannot buy healing. Money cannot buy long life. Money cannot buy deliverance. Money cannot buy power over the enemy. Money cannot buy victory over the world and victory over Satan. It's as you bring yourself. And you want to love God with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Come ye and buy and eat. Yea, come. Buy wine. It is not a uh, worldly wine. It's talking about the one that comes from heaven. A milk without money and without price. Look at verse 3. Incline your ear. Come unto me. Hear your soul shall live your soul shall live that's what he's telling us to come and buy eternal life for the soul how do we buy that not money repentance there's not money consecration there's not money loving god with all your heart your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Look at verse 6. Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him, while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the righteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. For he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Did I hear an amen? amen? This is what the Lord will do for us. I said this is what the Lord will do for us. Look at chapter 58. Chapter 58 of Isaiah. I'm reading from verse 8. Then shall your light break forth as the morning and then health shall spring forth speedily thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be the rear word thou shalt call and the Lord will answer that's the treasure we're finding the kingdom and he's saying whatever will stand in the way give that up because now the Lord will answer your prayer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke and thou put him forth of the finger and speak him vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity. Thy darkness shall be as in noon day. The Lord will guide you continually. At the crossroads, he will guide you. In the confusion of life, he will guide you. He will stand by your side every time and prevent you from falling into a pitfall in Jesus' name. It shall satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden like a spring of water whose waters fail not and they that be of thee your children your converts shall build the old waste places thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations you see that? You see what the Lord is telling us about the kingdom. Come into the kingdom, possess the kingdom, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of paths to dwell in. I've lost the amen there. Verse 13, verse 13, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from the lost day, from doing that own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, 
the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places, upon the high places of the world, and I will feed you of the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Possessors, where are you? Possessors, I said, where are you? The, the privilege of possessing all the peers of the kingdom. More is coming. Look at chapter 60 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise and shine. Darkness will vanish away. Confusion will vanish away. Powers of darkness will come under your feet. Arise and shine. For thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the gentiles shall come to thy light you will have many converts you'll have many children in the faith the gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising Look at verse 10. The sons of strangers shall build thy walls. And their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. And then it tells us in verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting no destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall no more be thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be to thee an everlasting light. Thy God and thy glory. The sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light. And the days of thy sorrow, the days of thy shame, the days of thy mourning, the days of thy suffering shall be ended. Thy people, thy people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hand, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his own time. Your time has come. There's a lot in the kingdom. And he says, give up everything. Plunge into the kingdom. Everlasting possession will be yours in Jesus' name. Now it's time for you to possess everything the Lord has for you in the kingdom. Arise and shine. Are you sitting down? I said, arise and shine. Arise and shine. There's forgiveness. There's freedom, there's salvation, there's restoration, there's sanctification, there is power, there is healing, there is long life, there's deliverance, there's dominion. There are all things waiting for you. Arise and shine, for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you.